first of all, I want to thank uh, conference, give me a chance to introduce my lab work. And today, my topic is here is neuroprotective agents for ALS. I'm from our medical school from Boston, so still like a, like a jack like you know, it's <laughs> time different, still like that way, yeah. Okay, let's say background. So ALS, as you know, is the chronic neurodegeneration disease. Currently only have one drug, it's FDA approved, called Ruluzone. This drug only can prove ALS patient prolong a three months life. But remember that only in the nursing house, I mean the better condition. So uh, urgently needed for new drug treat ALS patient. Okay, here's one example, uh, ALS patients, British professor uh, Stephen Hawking, his famous scientist, he, you, know, you see he sit down with chairs, really like an ALS patient, his leg already can't like stand up, the body can't stand up. Uh, so this year, uh, 2015, uh, Eddie Raymond uh, plays the, his role and win best actor for Oscar. So I think the society already recognize AOS and AD, other PD is very, very important neurodegeneration uh, disease. So uh, I, I, I think uh, also in that case, my lab, oh, okay, another thing is also great effort here, uh, the ice, the AOS ice bucket challenge, uh, like this, this picture, uh, this picture pictures President Obama, so collect the funding to, to collect the money donation to get more funding support AOS researcher. Uh, our lab long term is looking for new drug cure AOS. Here's one drug. Today I, I would like to uh, uh, talk uh, one drug, melatonin. melatonin. This drug you can also call a uh, sleeping pill. As Jennifer said, like, Jack lag, you can eat this drug. Yeah, but I, did, I didn't, I didn't eat yet. So, 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 so yeah, so this drug is yeah, a little bit so get sleeping better, so we can buy easy from CVS Wellgreen. And this drug not only have function for sleeping pill, but also uh, have effect neuroprotection for the neurodegeneration disease, including stroke, adult, uh, adult stroke and neonatal stroke. Also Huntington, also uh, Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson, important things for ALS, ALS. My lab working for this drug for many years, so we have a bunch of publication here. And first of all, I want to try to show melatonin uh, in the animal model. So melatonin delays disease onset, disease onset, and also extended survival in uh, ALS transgenic mice, we use the models msod one g 193 a transgenic mice. Here's uh, probability of survival. You can see the red color is drug-treated mice, and the black color is slim mice, just a vehicle. The, the, the drug-treated get longer, uh, longer survival. Uh, we check this, 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 we check this is the number for how much for how much we, we are, we get a survival 7%. And Ruluzone, as I said before, the um, uh, FDA only pool drug gets survival 7.5. This paper published two years ago, also Science Daily website, World Health and NetWeb uh, also introduces work. So not only in the animal model, also in the cellular model. In the NIC 34 motor neural cell culture, we found this drug works. The all blue colors with drug melatonin. Here you can see you can see this is, this is like a cell itself, 100% with viability. After uh, inducer H2O2 gets more than half cell died, and you put melatonin get recovery. Here more more dose get more recovery till like five micromolar. So, so this is melatonin works, but interestingly, I want to focus. I want to focus this right color. That's Ruluzone. This is, uh, melatonin is like a ligand for one receptor, melatonin receptor, uh, melatonin receptor one A, and Luzinda is antagonist for the receptor. So they they just like uh, like 
like like a fighting for get the bending bending side for this receptor. So my point is, if you put with Luzin Dao, all melatonin's function get lost. You see here, like H two O two itself. Okay, so here we did a molecular dunking analyze. We try to say why the Luzin Dao. Uh, sounds like it got all melatonin protection lost. So we say this red with green color, this is this is Robin, Robin, uh, Robin structures, melatonin receptor 1A, so MT1 we call. And here's small molecular, here's melatonin. They bending each other. So, sounds like this, this small molecular melatonin in there in the big uh, protein MT1. We see how much bending ability. Another is this one is Luzin, that's antagonist. This agonist is antagonist. So here's my, the, the MT1 the protein. We see who's most stronger with bending. Con conclusion is Luzin that's most stronger. We get one pi pi stack interaction. We get this, the shift of the uh, hydro band. So conclusion is. This one's most stronger bending with the, the bending side and melatonin function get, get lost after you put this luzine down. Not only in the QSAR, the chemical uh, interaction, we also did Western blood. We say here uh, in the NSC34 cells, if you put uh, stress with H202, this, this receptor get lost or get part of lost. And if you put with melatonin with the drug, then receptor back. So we do three uh, cellular models. This is NSC34 motor neural. Here's striatal neurons. Here's primary cortical neurons. So also same things. This paper published four years ago. And so this animal model also show that, as I said, the MSOD1 G98 cell, uh, the, the mice. You also say the mice get this receptor lost. This disease mice, this protein just almost gone, almost gone. But you put melatonin and get back, get kind of back, so get recovery, get recovery. And this is muscle section. We did the, the the problem is, is this one's spinal cord section, and here's muscle section. We see the we see that this is muscle cells. So so this is MT1. You, uh, we have more immunostaining, but ALS mice have less, and it also kind of damage here. So this is Western blood to show uh, similar things. We use GM muscle, and. Uh, Okay, so we, we, we try to figure out uh, this molecular um, MT1 receptor in the cellular culture, in the animal uh, model, we, next we try to how about in the human being. So this is, uh, this is uh, uh, LS patient sample, and we get messenger RNA, and here's regular control sub subject. Comparison, LS patient have less uh, MT1. And also, this is messenger RNA level. Here's protein level. Both show this protein get lost. So we use three like like we we use like three type things like LS patient, LS animal model, cellular model. We all show MT1 change. So MT1 maybe is very important target for this disease for LS. Okay, so. Now, now I, 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 we, we was thinking like in the lab, say, okay, melatonin works. How about other MT1 agonists? We have a bunch of agonists. Maybe this is a good bank. People can search, can screening, get better treatment for ALS. So, so far we have 146 drug, uh, oh, oh, you call agonist MT1, uh, already a document from G protein bank. And all have one similar things, endocal skeleton. And okay, the common uh, MT1 agonists have 18. So at least here, but today focus melatonin and this one's n serotonin we call NAS. Is, NAS is immediately precursor for melatonin. 
And you can see here, they have both, as I said, both have endo core skeleton. Different, just here's, uh, this is oxygen, this is HO. So, so this how, uh, uh, this, you see here, serotonin uh, go to NAS, then convert to melatonin. So NAS with melatonin have some common things and different things. Here's a story. We also tried this NAS drug in the ALS mice. And I, uh, this picture shows body weight, how much different. Here's one, one story. One day when Postal David from my lab came uh, from animal facility back to my office, he said, well, you know what? It's made, I have ma magic eyes. I can know which mice with which tra treatment. I don't need to say eyes tag. I just say mice. I say, oh, this drug treated this is not. I say, what happened? You have really have mice like a special eyes. You can say without labeling. And he said, easily. You just see the mice is bigger. This one's bigger. So this drug treated mice is bigger. So if you get bigger mice, generally this is drug treated. Beginning, I didn't believe him. I said, oh, wow. so why we label this? And later on, said another people, Postdoc go to the animal facility. So yes, I guess same thing. So I, I, I try to send, send third persons, female researcher. So we focus this idea, this is really drug treated mice get bigger. So we like chronic watch, how about situation? And answers, yes. Really, we get this mice bigger. We get this mice bigger. So it sounds like generally like treated by NAS drug, the mass body weight increased. And we also say it's muscle increase, very increased. Normally, if the mice body weight change, muscles big area get body weight change. So this is GM. We, we document GM. We, we see different area muscle, and we get GM change significant. So we talk about this situation. I have one collaborator from Mass General Hospital, Dr. Mary Kudwaz. She's a famous ALS researcher. So uh, one time she invited me to go there to give talk. I say, oh, we see, fan we, we see the situation for ALS mice. The mice get bigger. We don't know what happened, but mice really get bigger. I say, okay. So we in the clinic, we see similar things. They found here is uh, this, this is like a small uh, albitis appears to the uh, improved survival in AIS patient. Small or mildated, the, 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 the mild, the albitis. If patient eat a little bit more, get more energy, they get a little bit better condition and survival get a little bit longer. So right now they do the human trial. They do the human trial. They do the human trial in a clinical human trial to test the safety of tolerability of a high fat, high quality diet for ALS patient. So we hope this way, if you eat more, get more energy, maybe get a little bit longer ALS patient, you know, get a longer life. That would be great. That would be great. So, so, so my lab say, okay. So how about we check literature? Say, how many drug health ability? can increase animal body weight. So this is the list, this is the list of drugs. Including this one, we didn't publish this one yet. So, but we published this paper, this review paper this year, early this year, uh, collaborator with, col collaboration with uh, MGH, with Dr. Kudiwa's lab. So we see this a whole bunch of drug have ability to increase body weight. We also show here is Delay onset, all green, this is how much delay, how much percent this is survival delay. So we try to compare its own bench of neuroprotection agent, what's different. And also, uh, we try to summarize here how uh, pathogenic for pathway in ALS. So, so this, this is like an oxida oxidative stress. It's one mechanism. This ecstasy is another one. And also mitochondria uh, defunction, as Michael just talked, like mitochondria is very like, important here. Or autophagy or protein degraded pathway 
and uh, here is inflammation damage apoptosized pathway. And we talk about NAS health cell function. We, right now, lab is just working for that. And melatonin also working uh, with the drug, at least in this group. Some drug health uh, can be put in a different group. And new drug, third drug I want to talk today is N-acetyl-L-tryptophan, we call LNAT. Okay, so that drug is uh, NK1 receptors uh, antagonist. So this drug we say, uh, we put also in the animal model, we use different dogs. We say both 15 and 30 mg per kilo uh, delays disease onset also uh, also prolonger survival. Here is neuro new knowledge that scar also get changed. So we see this this drug comparison with melatonin get better survival. You can see here is eleven percent. Eleven percent is onset delay and uh, survival extended till ten point one and as we lose only seven point five. So we give better hope for this drug, for this drug. And this picture shows LCMS to show this distribution of this drug. When you do IP injection, sometimes people are talking about, okay, you do IP injection. How you can know your drug directly go to the spinal cord or you go to brain, the target area. So we do LCMS to say after injection where drug goes. So drug goes brain, no problem. Spinal cord, the most important location for ALS disease. Yes, no problem. Also muscle, also muscle. So we check this drug uh, reduce motor neural loss. See here, motor neural, and here get lost ALS mice. Here's uh, with drug get better. So I see Dr. Dr. Pan today like to talk about this motor neural like normal and ALS. So I think like like copy this 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 picture. Okay. So uh, next we say okay this drug LNAT works. What mechanism? What mechanism there? So we say maybe this drug is anti apoptotic. We do say uh, BCL two BCL uh, XL one uh, anti apoptotic mark. So BCL XL level, if increase, cell get better condition. And we see here in the ALS mice, we have less BCL XL. With this drug, we get better increase level BCL X. Okay. Alrighty. Not only BCL X, also CASP3. CASP3 is very important, apoptotic mark in the AD. In the PD, ALS, parking, uh, Huntington's drug, a lot of disease with this uh, apoptic mark shows already in a, a later stage of damage. So we show here caspase 3, active caspase 3, about 19 and 17 kilo dollar doing. You see cleavage of caspase 3 from pro caspase uh, 3, 32 kilo dollar doing. And with the drug, with the drug treated, you get better. Sounds it's gone. Sounds like an active caspase 3 is gone. Uh, we also show this drug working with reduce the release of cytochrome C uh, release and also SMAC release, ALF uh, release. I showed this example like this one, SMAC. It's mitochondria uh, protein. So in the ALS mice, you see very strong band here comparison with WT mice. And and with drug, this is 30 mg per kilo, get less, and one five also get strongly uh, reduced, significantly reduced. So we get conclusion this drug also working to uh, reduce the release of cytochrome C, SMAC, and AF. So the, also the drug working with active astrocytes. Astro so you see here, uh, with the time, mice get more and more uh, astrogliosis. Here, like, here's 13 until 14 weeks, you have more band in the GFAP uh, protein. And here is 
any stage mice, you have even more, more than this. So this, you, you see, if you use immunostaining, here staining shows DFAP a lot of staining, a lot of staining. But with drug and lice, the drug and lice. But, so we, we use Western blood and immunostaining both show drug working with reduce uh, active astrocytes. Not only astrocytes, also active microglia cells get decreased. Get decreased. Same thing. Here is longer, uh, longer like uh, end stage. You see more uh, IBA one, and here more IBA one. But with drug and lies, with drug and lies. So, so, so this this almost finally we say the drug also uh, restored the reduced NK one receptor level in the mice model. In the mice model. So this this you you say here is here with. NK1 receptor get lies with drug get increase and also in the standing. So this will show uh, co -localiza localization. Uh, we see NK1 receptor standing also co, uh, co localized with new cells, with astrocytes, with also with IBA1 standing the microglia cells. So, okay. Almost scientific part, I almost there. But I, I say right now some good news for NIH will increase funding. I hope Dr. Dr. Pang agree with me. <laughs> so this this is good news for researcher. We get more money, get support. Like my cause, we need like support from like NIH. Then we or other foundation get researchers like more financial support get research better. So so here, yeah. So I really think. With great effort, with basic medical researcher, clinical doctor, with biotech, the company together, people together, will be have a beautiful future for Curie LS. So I try to thank the foundation and I support my work. And here's have my school, and here's I try to thank lab people, David, Tasho, and Rachna, and also like Bahati and other people. So here I want to thank collaborators from Harvard Medical School, Mary Kudwaz from MGH, James Berry, and Dr. Drew, uh, Dr. Joe from BWH, Bruce, also Irina, and Nazam, and other collaboration international uh, major, also uh, like from United States here, Robert Freelander from University of Pittsburgh, and Robert Bouncer from Arizona, Dr. Dr. Drew Heining from University of Kentucky, and Rob Franti from University of Pittsburgh. I also want to thank Dr. Mao from Canada and one Dr. Zhang from FDA, from FDA. So happy this meeting. That's it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, we think so far this drug right now in the poor clinical stage. We just published the paper last month. So sounds like a, this, this is a way to, to reach uh, with clinical trial, I think it's a long way to go. But still, we talk about like with MGH uh, clinical doctors, any chance maybe go to phase one, phase two, you know, uh, go on. But still, we we thinking about the mechanism will be for cause inflammation related uh, mechanism. So because this drug, like you said, like working with microglia cells, astrocytes, very kind of focus inflammation pathway. So this one one way, yeah, we want to focus. Look at that. 